Well, notably, Anderson here, this is the second time in the past seven months that this federal judge out of California, David Carter, is saying that former President Donald Trump likely committed crimes in those efforts to overturn the 2020 election. And this is all coming out now because Judge Carter is now ordering John Eastman, of course, he's the attorney who orchestrated these efforts to block the certification, uh, to even turn over more documents to the January 6th committee. He's being ordered to turn over eight more documents. And at least part of these documents, one email in particular, it shows how President Trump was made aware that voter fraud numbers he submitted in state and federal court were false. But even after he was made aware, he submitted those fake numbers to the court anyway. So the judge wrote as part of this 18-page opinion, he said, the emails show that President Trump knew that the specific numbers of voter fraud were wrong, but continued to tout those numbers both in court and to the public. The court finds that these emails are sufficiently related to and in furtherance of a conspiracy to defraud the United States. So that's the first crime Judge Carter says was likely committed here, Anderson. The second was felony obstruction. The judge said the former president was filing all of these lawsuits contesting the election, not to get legit legal relief, but instead to, with this specific purpose to disrupt the election process and impede the certification of Joe Biden as president. So the judge here is allowing even more evidence of this alleged criminal activity to be handed over to the January 6th committee. And now the question is, Anderson, will prosecutors get this evidence too? What implications could this have for the ongoing criminal probes into the former president? So we know of the Justice Department probe and the DA in Georgia. And this really unveils even more evidence for prosecutors, particularly at the Justice Department, who have been probing, probing over all these efforts to overturn the 2020 election on multiple fronts. But the real question now is, you know, will prosecutors, will the Attorney General Merrick Garland ultimately think it's enough to charge the former president or any of his allies with that obstruction or conspiracy to defraud. Interestingly, it's not just these emails that are being hand handed over. In the order today, some of the documents that are also being given to the January 6th committee involve Eastman's pitch to former Vice President Mike Pence to block the certification of the vote, which of course, Pence ultimately refused to do. So there is a lot here for DOJ, for prosecutors in Georgia to sift through if they do get their hands on it after the committee does to see if they should press charges here. Uh, but Jessica, why wouldn't they get their hands on? I mean, couldn't the com doesn't the committee share? Uh, can't they? I mean, uh, there, there was some issue early on about sharing information, but the committee could just give it to the Department of Justice, couldn't they? Absolutely, and they very well might do that. But you know, there has been that sticking point to how much evidence the committee's actually been handing over to prosecutors, both at the DOJ right. and elsewhere. You would assume that they would hand over these emails as well and these documentation from Eastman, but we'll see right. if that actually happens. Jessica Schneider, appreciate it. Thank you. Perspective now from senior political commentator Alyssa. Farah Griffin, who served as Director of Strategic Communications under the former president, and conservative lawyer George Conway, a contributing columnist at The Washington Post. So George, when a federal judge uses the phrase conspiracy to defraud the United States in relation to the former president, what does that signal about potential legal exposure? Well, it signals, it signals and confirms something that we already knew, that this judge already believes that Trump has uh, uh, extens extensive potential legal exposure under the two statutes that he cites, the statutes of Section 371 and Section 1512 of the United States Code. But the story really isn't about the federal liability here, because compared to what the, ju what the January 6th committee has come up with, this is just a, this is just tiny compared to the mountain of evidence that we've seen at the January 6th hearings. What this is, is a smoking gun in Georgia. Because if you if you look at what the judge describes here at the e, uh, of these emails is, they file a, a lawsuit, a state court lawsuit in Dece early December, December fourth, making various allegations about dead people voting, about uh, felons voting, about unregistered voters um, voting, and by the end of December they're aware that these allegations are false, and that's the email that the judge quotes here, one of the emails where Eastman says. The president has since been made aware that some of the allegations um, um, are, have been inaccurate. And then they go and they make him, they actually, the lawyers go and they have him file a federal lawsuit where, the where, where, where Trump, Trump uh, certifies under oath, verifies under oath that these allegations were in fact true. And he, you know, that's, a, that's perjury and that, that's certainly evidence of federal crimes. But remember, when, when Eastman makes this statement, it's December 31st, 
What happens three days later, mm. two days later? He makes, Trump makes the call to Raffensperger. Mm. He, he, he makes that famous recorded call, infamous report, right, recorded call, the votes. when he's asking Raffensperger, demanding Raffensperger, threatening Raffensperger, if he doesn't, to find exactly 11,780 yeah. votes, one more than he needs. This is a smoking gun for the prosecutor in Georgia. And the Georgia investigation is very advanced. This is going to be a very important document and exhibit in the, in, in the, in the charges that I'm sure she's going to bring. And Alyssa, I remember you saying that you've been hearing from folks in that world, that in Trump world, that the, the Georgia case is something that they are concerned about. Yeah, something I consistently hear from Republicans who are still, you know, loosely aligned with Trump world is that what they're most afraid of is the Fulton County investigation. Mm -hmm. That could be for any number of reasons, but this is another fact that comes out that's tangentially related and shows that this is a president who we know lied with impunity for the entirety of his time in office, frankly, most of his career. But this is a situation where you can't lie with impunity. You cannot lie in a court filing and misrepresent facts. Mm. Um, it's, it just confirms what many of us know, which is there was this desperate period in the final days um, ahead of the transfer of power after the election was called for Joe Biden, where it was really some of these advisors around the president and the former president himself throwing things against a wall to see what would stick. And you had said to the January 6th committee, and correct me if I'm wrong, something along the lines, you had heard the former president then say, uh, you know, I, can you believe I'm losing this effing guy? Just, just days after the race was called for President Biden, I walked into his dining room off of the Oval Office to check in on the former president. Joe Biden was on TV and he said, can you believe I lost to this effing guy? Mm -hmm. So th 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 the fact is most people around Trump, including Trump himself, himself knew he lost, but they wanted to desperately cling to power in any way that they could. I would agree with George. I do think this is the closest thing to a smoking gun of just deliberate wrongdoing and misleading. The one thing I thought was interesting, though, to Jessica's point is I would, I've worked with the January 6th committee. The work they're doing is important, but this needs to go to the Department of Justice. Mm -hmm. That's where you're going to get accountability. They do not have power to indict him. That needs to go to the Department of Justice. George, how do you see this playing out in Georgia and, and what the timeline there is like? Well, I, I think the Georgia investigation, based upon the, the, the witnesses they have called, seems to be fairly well advanced. And I would think that they would want to bring charges by the end of the year because you really want to, I mean, you, I don't, it's been going on for quite some time. And I think she's held back, frankly, because of the um, Elections. She doesn't want to be accused of uh, Fonnie Willis of, of affecting the election. So I, I think that and the, all of the, the sense that people are getting is that investigation is moving much more quickly than mm. the federal investigation. And this is just, I mean, this is a devastating piece of evidence here. We've obviously seen, you know, the former president willing to take things all the way to the Supreme Court. Are his legal options winnowing down somewhat? It would seem so. Um, even this, this, the separate reporting on now he wants to open up Mar-a-Lago to further, you know, investigations and looking for more documents, it kind of reeks of desperation. I think that he's in a place where he feels cornered in various different investigations. Even today he was sitting down for um, re responding to allegations related to um, sexual assault allegations from over a decade ago. This man is cornered at every turn and he's not surrounded by wise legal counsel. So I think you're going to see further acts of desperation from him. George, do you think, do you see legal any legal avenues he could use to try to delay or block Eastman from turning over the emails? Yeah, I think there's, well, no, I, they're not, not, the, not the emails. I mean, these emails are going to go to the January 6th committee, and, and the January 6th committee has been working with the Justice Department and with the Georgia prosecutors. This is coming in, that this is going to be used against him, and it's a devastating, as I said, a devastating piece of evidence. And I agree with Alyssa. Um, he's a desperate man. And he's getting more and more desperate. And I think we're going to see that over the coming months. And I think it's going to force his hand into he will run for president to, for his effect, in effect for protection uh, against these legal proceedings. But there's just going to be too many of them. Mm. And um, I think we're going to see the, you know, I think he might get the nomination anyway. But I think we're going to see the meltdown to end all meltdowns of, of a public figure. Alyssa uh, Farrah Griffin, George Conway, thanks so much. Appreciate it.